throughout the movie that there are references to God and references to Jesus. But in the end, where are they? They don't do anything, but the aliens come to the rescue. In 2006, ABC had a miniseries called Fallen, and they used the term Nephilim. I could not believe it. These, and this was a young man named Aaron. It was his job to get the Nephilim back to heaven. He was called the Redeemer, the Chosen One, who was going to take them back to heaven. This is good old family TV. Isn't that wonderful? Here's a movie. I'd give it a, maybe a C+. Plus. But uh, Skyline, and it, the tagline is, don't look up. And in the movie we see where these people are being taken up into these spaceships. So you shouldn't look up because you, if, you're, if you're taken, that's a real bummer. But if you're able to, to survive, then of course that is seen as a good thing. We also see genetic alteration in the movies. We see the Incredible Hulk where he gets zapped and his, his entire DNA is transformed. We of course have the X-Men. The whole premise of this is that every so often humanity or evolution makes a quantum leap and now it's making one more quantum leap and now people are evolving to become these superhuman type beings. And of course, there's this, this war that, in, in, that entails. We have Captain America. He goes from being you know, the 90 pound weakling through genetic alteration to becoming this superhuman type of person. And of course we have Spider-Man. What child doesn't know about Spider-Man? Where through, again, through genetic alteration, he becomes a superhero. There is so much that is getting the world ready for what is coming. And then of course, as LA so eloquently described for us this morning, we have the Katy Perry video, E.T where she says, could you be the devil? Could you be an angel? You're not like the others, futuristic lover, different DNA. You're from a whole other world, a different dimension. Infect me with your love and fill me with your poison. Want to be a victim, ready for abduction. Again, over 180 million people on YouTube alone have seen this video. And it's Christians and non-Christians who are watching this. Don't think it's only the people out there. But there are Christians who are watching this and it's getting them ready for the coming deception. We have people of uh, such caliber as astronauts and presidents and others who say that they have seen some type of UFO. For example, we have Captain Edgar D. Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut, says, we all know that UFOs are real. All we need to ask is where do they come from? And also, according to an ABC News poll conducted in 2000, nearly half of all Americans and millions more globally believe that we're not alone. 40 million Americans say they've seen or know someone who has seen an unidentified flying object or UFO. A growing number believe they've actually met aliens. Then we have U.S. leaders. President Ronald Reagan, of course, before he was president. But he says, I looked out the window and saw this white light. It was zigzagging around. I went up to the pilot and said, have you ever seen anything like that? He was shocked and he said, nope. And I said to him, let's follow it. We followed it for several minutes. It was a bright white light. We followed it to, our, to Bakersfield and all of a sudden to our utter amazement, it went straight up into the heavens. Then Pr President John F. Kennedy said, the US Air Force assures me that UFOs pose no threat to national security. Gerald Ford, I strongly recommend that there be a committee investigation of the UFO phenomena. I think we owe it to the people to establish credibility regarding UFOs and to produce the greatest possible enlightenment on this subject. Jimmy Carter said, I do not laugh at people anymore when they say they've seen UFOs. I've seen one myself. And then we have Barry Goldwater. I certainly believe in aliens in space and that they are indeed visiting our planet. They may not look like us, but I have very strong feelings that they have advanced beyond our mental capabilities. Well, here we have the famous General Douglas MacArthur. He says, you now face a new world, a world of change. We speak in strange terms of harnessing the cosmic energy of ultimate conflict between a united human race and the sinister forces of some other planetary galaxy. The nations of the world will have to unite for the next war will be an interplanetary war. The nations of the earth must someday make a common front against attack by people from other planets. Now, what, what could he be talking about? Remember in Revelation 19, it says that Jesus is going to come back on his white horse and it says that the, the 
uh, the false prophet and the beast have gathered all the nations of the earth together to fight against the one who was on the white horse. You see, when the Lord Jesus comes back, it's not one nation against another nation. It's all the nations united, Israel accepted, of course, but all the nations united against